We got quiet. I guess we're ready to begin. <laughs> I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6.01. If you would please stand as Mr. Scott Kidd leads us in his invocation and Mr. Dr. Mel Brown leads us in the Pledges of Allegiance. If you would like, uh, please uh, bow your head, heads and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we just uh, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your many blessings that you bestow upon this community and our school district. Dear Heavenly Father, we, uh, we lift up our children, we, we ask for their protection, for our teachers, for our staff. Lord, we specifically uh, thank you and lift up our law enforcement officials, officers, and, and uh, Lord, we just thank you for, for what they do, and, and uh, we just ask for their continued protection as well. Tonight, dear God, we uh, pray for guidance and direction in the decisions that we make. We, we pray for patience and discernment, and just uh, be with us tonight. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the for the hearts in this room and for their their hearts for service for your children. And just uh, guide and direct us, and uh, help us have a, a good meeting, Lord. In your name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join with we pledge our country's flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now our state flag. <laughs> Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Mr. Kidd, thank you so much. And Dr. Brown, thank you as well. Item number 2A, Awards and Recognition, Special District Recognition, Conroe ISD Police Department. Dr. Stockton? We are honored in the Conroe School District to have a great police department, and, and, I, and I sincerely uh, believe that we, they do a great job of protecting uh, not only our children, but our adults, and, and we're very fortunate. Um, recently, they've, they've been uh, recognized or will be recognized in the near future for a, a prestigious award. And to introduce that award today, we have John Chancellor, who's the Chief of Police of Shenandoah, and he's the first, first Vice President of the Texas Police Chiefs Association. Chief, if you'll come up, please. Thank you. Honorable Chairman and Board Members, good evening. My name is John Chancellor, as Dr. Stockton said, and I'm the Police Chief for the City of Shenandoah, and I became the Chief in 1996, about the same time that you hired Chief Harness. We are also a recognized agency. I'm honored to be here tonight representing the Texas Police Chiefs Association. The Texas Police Chiefs Association made up over a thousand professional law enforcement agencies across the state and leaders of those agencies. I hold in my hand, if I can find it, a copy of a magazine with Dr. Stockton's picture on it. And that caption says, Don Stockton, the legacy of excellence. And I'm here to tell you tonight, that's a true honor. And what professional leader would not want something like that written about him? And so I applaud Dr. Stockton for that. Thank you, Dr. I'm here tonight to present your police department certificate of recognition for achieving compliance with Texas law enforcement best practices and to say, and you're taking a step in furthering your legacy of excellence. You clearly know about accreditation being in the school business. It complies, it makes you comply with a, a set of standard, uh, professional standards. The Texas best practices is an accreditation program. It has 166 very difficult standards for Texas law enforcement. Over a year ago, Chief Harness Bill and the men and women of the Conroe ISD Police Department began a process of proving its compliance with these standards. The process culminated this past June when two professional assessors from other parts of the state arrived in Conroe for an on-site inspection of the department. The assessors interviewed staff, inspected facilities and operating 
uh, procedures. They rode with officers in the field and ensured compliance with all 166 standards. The report was then sent to a police chief, uh, nine police chiefs from across the state who reviewed the report and voted to award the recognized status, then the vote was unanimous. During the process, your police department proved that it meets all of the, and, or exceeds all standards. There are currently over 2,400 law enforcement agencies in the state of Texas, and only 106 have achieved recognized status, and only four ISD school departments have achieved that status. Tonight, one of your, your agency is the fourth ISD agency to achieve this status. Board members, this is what it means to you. The recognition program assures this board, the students and staff, that your police department is operating in a manner that re reflects the current best practices of the state of Texas law enforcement. It means your police department is one of the very best. The certificate we present tonight is just a symbol, but it meant it's a mark of professional excellence. Not the end, the department must comply and continue to comply and submit annual reports every year for the next four years, and then they will have another on-site assessment where assessors will come back in. Chief Harness, will you step forward with your officers, please? Any one of y'all want to step up here with them? <laughs> Texas Police Chief Association Foundation, to all the, the circuits have known that the Conroe ISD Police Department have fulfilled the necessary qualification and mandatory requirements of the Texas Police Chief Association, the Law Enforcement <coughs> Best Practices Recognition Program, by voluntarily proving their compliance with the Texas Law Enforcement Best Practices of the Texas Police Chief Association Foundation, Board of Directors do hereby award the Certificate of Recognition effective the 8th day of July, 2014, through 2018. Congratulations, Chief. <laughs> John, if you come up too, we'd like to shake your hand too. If you come up, uh -huh. someone start us off. Come on, Thank you so much for all you do for Congratulations. us. Congratulations! Congratulations! Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Great job, Chief. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. John, it's always good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. No, I don't do that. Yeah. All right. Item 2B, Special District Recognition, Read for a Better Life Initiative. Dr. Stockton? Yes. Can everybody hear me? Wow. <laughs> well, this is my favorite board meeting of the, of the school year uh, because we had to spend time reading. And reading is the most critical thing that we do in our schools. Some of you may, may not be aware of this, but once a month our school board takes a day out of their busy schedule and they devote it to visiting classrooms within Conroe ISD. And whenever we go into a classroom, we talk about reading and we tell the students that the most important thing that they can do to improve their life in the future is to read as much as they can right now. We think that's very, very critical. And a big component of that is to have adults read to children. You know, we started this initiative almost 10 years ago with the idea that if every adult would spend 30 minutes with every child every day, 
it would change the world, reading, reading during that time. Uh, not only from a standpoint of a love of reading, but the bonds that would be developed during that time. So we believe very strongly in that. In fact, I uh, heard Colin Powell years ago say that what this country needs is, is more laptops, or more laptops. And not the laptops you plug into a wall, but the laptops that children sit on when parents are reading to them. So we, we again, think reading is really, really critical to our future as a society and a community. So uh, we encourage, on this night, all of our parents to read to kids for 30 minutes. And then tomorrow we're going to do our big kickoff. Now, we've already been reading in the school because we've been in school for three weeks now. Uh, but tomorrow we're going to do our big kickoff. We'll have people in across the district um, reading to our, chi or to our children, modeling that, which, again, we think is critical. <coughs> Before I invite our very special guests up here, I want to ask if you're a teacher in CISD or a librarian, would you please stand? And then just stand there for a second. Would you please, um, would you please recognize these folks because... <laughs> Just because. Just because we want to recognize you. We want to recognize you because you read every day. You read every day, and that's really important to our children, and we thank you for that. Okay, speaking of our children, we have, every year we invite a group of children up uh, to, to be the uh, listeners at, at this board meeting. This year we invited the children of our curriculum instruction department. You know, they're, they're behind the scenes doing great things to help our teachers be successful. We have great teachers, and part of the reason is because we have great support for them. So today, tonight, we have the children of the CNI department. So we're going to ask you to line up here, and if, you're, if you will, if you'll take this microphone. Come on up, come on up, line up, guys, it'll be okay. Zachary's going to be, Zachary's my buddy, we're going to go first. And all, what you're going to do, now this is your moment of, of uh, kind of, everybody paying attention to you, just tell them who you are and what what grade you're in or age you are. <laughs> how about just who you are and how and in your age, okay? You got it? Did I really confuse you? Okay, I got uh, You can do it. I know you can. I'm Zachary Berger. I'm 10 years old, turning 11 this year. Perfect, perfect. Now, if you'll come over. Almost. You'll come over. That's what I'm just sit down right here, buddy. Okay. You're on. I'm Caitlin Zoda, and I'm 10. No, 9. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be able to okay, you ready? I'm Jacob Upshaw, and I'm in second grade, and I'm 7. Great. All right. Hello, I'm Dallas. I'm in first grade, and I'm 6. Good job. Oh, this way, this way. There you go. I'm Christian Arnold, and I am 9. Wonderful. Have a seat. My name is Brock, and I'm... Five. Oh, congratulations. There you go. My name's Cassie Bishop. I am nine. Thank you. Oh, come on. I'm Sadie and I'm five. Oh, congratulations. That's cute. I'm Emily and I'm five. <laughs> I'm Annabelle and I'm five. <laughs> and I'm Dr. Stuck and I'm five, too. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Joshua Upshaw, and I'm in second grade, and I'm seven. Great job. Good job. Hello. Is this, a, is this a team? How about a duet? Can we do a duet? Can we do a duet? Well, who, who this is Brayden, and he is four, and I'm Ryan, and I'm 13. Oh, Great. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, if you'll, if you'll scoot in here right in front of me. All right. Now, we've gone high tech this year. As I read, you'll see the pictures on the big screens. Okay, can everybody see? Can everybody see the board? Okay. <clears throat> what a great audience. I'm really excited. The book I'm going to read to you is called The Snatch a Book. And as I read, the pictures are going to come up on that big screen. Okay. One dark, dark night in Burrow Down, a rabbit named Eliza Brown found a book and settled down when a snatch a book flew into town. In every house, in every bed, a bedtime book was being read. Tales of dragons spitting flames, witches playing spooky games. Pirates on the seven seas, princes trying to sleep on peas. And every child in every bed listened hard to each word said. Eliza Brown at number three was reading quite contentedly. Her curtains opened just a chink, she barely had a chance to blink. Her storybook just disappeared. 
Eliza found that very weird. The little owls on mommy's lap were quite surprised to hear a tap against their bedroom window glass. Tap, tap, the noise came really fast. Before they'd even looked around, the book was gone without a sound. The wind blew wild across the sky. The smallest squirrel heard a cry. What's that, she whispered to her dad. But then, and this was really bad, before they'd had a chance to look, she'd lost her very favorite book. And so it went night after night. Books disappeared from left to right. Five books here and six books there. The shelves began to look quite bare. In Burrow Down, the rumor spread of thieves under every bed. Eliza Brown at number three was keen to solve the mystery. She planned one night to lie in wait and use a pile of books as bait. Long hours passed without a peep. She'd nearly fallen fast asleep. When suddenly Eliza heard a flap of wings, a bat, a bird. Eliza saw a shadow loom enormous right across her room. What kind of monster could it be, Eliza thought. You don't scare me. And yet her heart was beating fast. She'd have to face the thief at last. She threw the window open wide and shouted to the thing outside, stop stealing our books right now. Just give them back. I don't care how. I'm sorry, came a little voice. I really am. I had no choice. Eliza looked down in surprise. She couldn't quite believe her eyes. So who are you and what's your name? The creature hung its head in shame. He mumbled with a mournful look. I'm just a little snatch a book. Eliza nodded solemnly. She sat the creature on her knee. You can't just come and help yourself to every book on every shelf. A tear rolled from the creature's eye and softly he began to cry. I know it's wrong, but can't you see? I've got one, no one to read to me. Eliza sighed. He looked so sad. If he just had a mom or dad to read him stories every night, well then he might behave all right. That very night they hatched a plan and so the snatch of book began. To give back all the books he'd picked, Eliza Brown was very strict. Then trying hard to prove himself, he stacked them neatly on every shelf. And when he made his full amends, Eliza called on all her friends and told them how he'd worked all night to turn a wrong into a right. And now each night in Burrow Down, as darkness falls upon the town, in every house and every bed, a bedtime book is being read. And if you take a closer look, you might just see the snatch of book, perched happily on someone's bed, listening hard to each word said. <clears throat> Did you like that book? Yes. Yeah. Somebody tell me, somebody raise your hand and tell me what you liked about the book. What did you like about the book? Uh, I liked the part when uh, Snatch a Book snatched all the books. When he snatched all the books, okay. Anybody like anything else? What else did somebody like? Somebody like Tell me what you like. Yes. The whole book. You like the whole book? No. Well, you know, the, you know what's really neat? When I read a book like this and I look around and you're so lucky because you have people that read to you, mom and dads read to you. Aren't you lucky to have that? And that's our hope that everybody has someone to read to them. So make sure that you're reading as much as you can because we think that's really important. So can I get a picture with you before you go tonight? Okay, what if I stay right like I am and you all come around me? Okay. <laughs> How about we can put some on the ground like, oh, on a knee. You guys got it all lined up. Could you come right in here, sweetheart? Right here. Come right here. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. What a fine group looking group. Okay, ready? Okay, big smiles, everybody. Great. Thank you, everybody. How about a round of applause for our great students? Thank you. Now, your homework assignment for the...
for the rest of your life is to go out and find children to read to. And if you ever want to volunteer, if you're not in our school system and you want to volunteer, go to a school. Um, we will check you out before we let you in with our kids. That's, you know, we're not letting anybody in. But um, And then we'll put you to work reading to our students, which is the most worthwhile thing you'll ever do. So thank you for your attention tonight. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Item 2C, Citizens Participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? All right. The next 30 minutes have been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board in accordance with board policy BEB. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, a person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for the presentation. Delegations of more than five must appoint one representative to present their views to the board. Ms. Ferris, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Margie Podzielinski. <clears throat> Everybody back there said you finally got my name. That's so great. <laughs> um, I just want to thank Dr. Stockton and the initiative for Read for a Better Life. Um, it is so important to be reading to kids. And I brought a Neil Gaiman quote for you all tonight. It says, we have an obligation to read aloud to our children, to read them things they enjoy, to read to them stories we are already tired of, to do the voices, to make it interesting, and to not stop reading to them just because they learn to read to themselves. Use reading aloud time as bonding time, as time when no phones are being checked, when the distractions of the world are put aside. That's from Neil Gaiman with The Guardian in October 2013. So we want to thank everyone, and we hope to see in our schools reading to our kids. And I brought you a book from the Blue Bonnet List. Texas has a state list for reading. The Texas Blue Bonnet List is for students in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. They have 10 chapter books and 10 picture books. This year, the, one of the books that they have on the list is The Day the Crayons Quit. This is personification of the crayons. And you can do all the voices while you're reading to children. So this will be a great book for you all in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, I want to help you with the um, reading project. Call me. Okay. Thank you so much. You're using these tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Put to work. All right. Love those. Anyone else? Truck Bollinger. I don't really know how this works, but uh, I want to bring to your attention the late bus drop-offs from Caney Creek. They're doing a satellite drop-off, and they're expecting parents to go pick them up, which is understandable, but most of these kids are getting off this bus. Their parents are not home until after them, so these children are walking on 105 during rush hour traffic for a quarter mile. And then with the days getting late, we're going to end up having more issues of kids risk and getting hit and it's not just Emerson estate it's not just one bus it's all the buses out there are making these children walk farther to get just to the entrance to their subdivisions and making them walk along highways because they cannot get picked up by their parents because their parents are not getting home until after these children have already walked 30 minutes to get to their house and I'd like to see if last year they dropped them off at the front of the subdivisions, we didn't have a lot of issues with it. I mean, a little traffic, but that's to be dealt with with as many people as we got. But I don't want to see some kid get clipped by somebody that's driving like an idiot, not paying attention, playing on their cell phone or something, or even worse, we're ending up having to bury one of our kids. I don't want to see that. I mean, I have two teenagers and then I got two little kids. I don't want to grow up having to worry about my daughters getting on these buses with these people out here like this. So I would really appreciate if we could look into maybe fixing this issue. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark McCloy. Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, School Board. Good evening. My name is Mark McCloy, and I am the president of TSDA Conroe. We are affiliated with NEA. I would like to thank this, take this time to thank you for the hard work and dedication in making the Conroe ISD the, a premier district in the state. I would like to introduce tonight uh, my school, my executive board, TSTA Conroe's executive board. Mrs. Courtney Watson cannot be here tonight. She is my vice president. Miss Amy Sharp is my secretary. Miss Amanda Cosi is our treasurer. And Mr. Greg Davis, membership chair. He cannot be here tonight. TSTA Conroe represents hundreds of employees throughout the district. We represent teachers, bus drivers, custodians, and many other education support professionals. We are dedicated to giving the students of this district the best possible education we can provide. As we all well know, a well-trained and well-informed staff provides a safe and friendly atmosphere for all students. Our members are not just employees in, to this district, but also parents, community leader, leaders, and taxpayers of Montgomery County. We look forward to working with this board and future board members and continuing education excellence for the Conroe Independent School District. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mark. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Item three is our consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any items from the consent agenda for discussion? If not, Mr. It... President, I move the approval with the, including the uh, amendment that was distributed tonight. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for approval. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed. All right, item four, curriculum and instruction. Read for a Better Life Resolution. Dr. Stockton. Well, Dr. Hines, if you'll come present that item, please. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Um, certainly, as we saw earlier this evening, this is a great night uh, when we get to uh, acknowledge uh, read for the Better Life resolution, and tonight I bring forward for your approval uh, a resolution, and I'll read it to you. Whereas the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees recognizes that being read to aloud is the single most important activity for children to build the knowledge required for their eventual success in reading, and whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that success in reading is the gateway to success in other academic areas, and Whereas the Board of Trustees recognizes that an individual's ability to read affects all aspects of their lives, form the development of critical thinking and problem-solving skills, to gaining knowledge about the world in which we live, thus making them a valued and contributing member of society. It is therefore resolved that the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees proclaims that the staff of CISD will support Read for a Better Life and authorizes the district to enlist the support of the parents and community of CISD to read aloud to every student 30 minutes of every day. We ask for your approval of this resolution. I move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed. Thank you, Dr. Hines. We thank appreciate you. it. Well, thank you for your support of the reading initiative. I know many of you read in our classrooms quite often, and we appreciate that. And Certainly appreciate uh, the discussion about reading every time we, we go into a classroom, so thank you for that. Absolutely. All right, item five, administration bond referendum update. Dr. Stockton? Uh, Easy Foster, would you come and present that item as we move away the big screen? <laughs> Thank you. 
evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. <coughs> it is my pleasure to bring, bring, bring forward for you an update of our capital improvements, projects and projects, projects in progress throughout the district. Starting at Oak Ridge High ninth grade campus, uh, this campus is on schedule. Uh, it is scheduled to be open for all, all the parts of this project scheduled to be open for school at the end of next summer. What we're looking at here is uh, the slab and areas where the administration offices are going to be expanded. So part of this project is give this building a, a little bit of a facelift, some additional administration space, and give it a, uh, a more prominent identity in the Oak Ridge complex. The, we are adding science labs on the north end of that, that building, and what you're seeing here the underground uh, going into that. And we're adding uh, classrooms on the what would be the west end of that building. Uh, classroom space, some art labs, culinary labs, things of that nature. Excuse me, <laughs> Mr. Cross. Yes, sir. I've yet to go out there. What's that space taken up? What, what was that space prior to when we Well, the, the area here, I mean, if I've got my orientation correctly, there used to be our portable buildings sitting in this area. Okay. So we moved those portables out. We're infilling with permanent classroom space there. The uh, chemistry labs and the uh, science labs are on the north end of campus, but it's just green yard space. Mm -hmm. uh, and then admin, just there was a, a small circle drive that really wasn't useful for today's large vehicles. We just took in that drive to get the additional admin space. Okay, just curious. Moving on to Vogel Intermediate. This is an eight, eight classroom addition to Vogel Intermediate School. Um, I'm happy to report our contractors made some significant progress here. The uh, project was initially scheduled to be complete right around spring break. Uh, the contractor is not committed to a turnover time at Christmas break. So we're working with uh, purchasing and technology to get the furniture and everything uh, in uh, for that transition. So we should be able to start the spring semester with kids in, in new classrooms. As you can see here, things are progressing well. There are interior systems and mechanical systems, walls. By the, uh, the end of next week, the building will be dry. Uh, so we'll be starting to put, put together the insides very quickly. The uh, last major project that's underway is the light fixture, uh, LED light fixture replacement. Uh, this is a picture inside Connor High School. It's mainly a representation of a change out from our what I, uh, older fluorescent technology, we, we refer to as T12 fluorescent, to uh, uh, LEDs. At this point, this project started uh, has a total of approximately 15,000 fixtures in it. Uh, we're sitting on about 7,000 fixtures installed so far, uh, so we're, we're right on track with that one. The project is scheduled to be complete, uh, all the fixtures installed by November 15th, and then between November 15th and November 30th, our utility provider will be doing their post-construction inspections where we qualify for rebates from the utility company. Mm -hmm. We're looking at here again, this is Connor High School. It's another another LED fixture. You're looking at the welding shop. Uh, so we've hopefully uh, got a vast improvement of the lighting quality in, in, in that space. And those are the major projects. I mean, we do have some loose ends and things that we're always tidying up, but those are the, the key, right. key elements we want to share with you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> Item six, business and finance. A, approved parameter sale order for series 2014A and 2014B school bonds and refunding bonds. Dr. Stockton. Mr. Cox, if you'll present that item, please. President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, we're coming tonight with a proposal to sell new bonds and do a rather significant refunding. Uh, prior to presenting the item, I'd like to ask uh, John Roebuck, one of our financial advisors, to make a brief presentation on the refunding. President Sanders, uh, board members, uh, Dr. Stockton, John Roebuck, BOSC. Um, I believe we're, the presentation is on the screen in front of you guys. I'll speak to that if you don't mind. If you go turn to page one, this is the bond buyer index. This is uh, the weekly snapshot of the municipal bond market. This kind of gives an indication of what the bond market is doing. Uh, the district sells tax exempt general obligation bonds, so we're, we're really focused on the blue line. And if you look to the far right, the current uh, bond buyer index is a 421. Actually, we put this together last week so we could have it in your board pack. It's actually now a 412, so it's come down a little bit. Uh, if you look at the uh, historical average there in the blue box, 
the average is a 518, so we're almost uh, we're a little over 100 basis points lower than the historical average. So we're in a good, good mark to sell bonds. On the next page, uh, before I get into the details, uh, we're looking at really doing two different refundings. Uh, the first one is going to be a permanent school fund guaranteed refunding. Uh, a lot of our bonds that we've issued in the past have had this permanent school fund guarantee, which is, allows us to sell the bonds with a AAA rating, lowest, the highest rating uh, out there, which produces the lowest interest cost to the district. Uh, the second one, actually, for a while there, the PSF permanent school fund guarantee was closed, so we issued bonds without it. We cannot go back and refund those bonds with PSF bonds because they didn't originally have it. So we're looking at two refundings here. The first piece is on page two there. We're looking at refunding uh, a portion of the Series 2005A bonds, a portion of the Series 2006 bonds, and uh, some 2008 bonds. Uh, if you look down at the very bottom, we're looking to refund approximately $97.6 million of bonds to generate savings of approximately $7.4 million of savings. Um, these are a little conservative numbers. We hope to come back, if you all approve this, with a little higher savings, but uh, that's where we are right now. Any questions on those bonds? Over what period of savings are? It's going to be, well, actually, we'll get to that in page four. It's going to show the actual savings structure. Um, we'll go from, pay, uh, go from 2015 out to 2030, so mm -hmm. for about 15 years. On the following page, this is the non-PSF insured refunding we're looking at doing. Uh, it's the Series 2005Bs. Again, these were not issued PSF, so we have to issue them without PSF, refund without PSF bonds. We're looking at 22.5 million in bonds, generate approximately 2.4 million in savings. The following page combines the two refundings together, so you see the annual savings. The far left is the district's current debt service requirements. Uh, right now, you all have debt service requirements going out from 14 all the way to 39. Again, this bond issue, the refunding goes out to 2030, so about 15 years. The second column there is the debt we're looking to refund. It's a combination of all those bonds we just looked at, the total debt surface and interest, plus the two series of bonds, the 2014As and 2014Bs, for a combined total debt service on the far right and the estimated savings there in yellow. So we're looking at roughly $660,000 a year in savings for 15 years. So a total of nine point eight million dollars. John, if we, yes, sir. Are you are you at a stopping point? Sure, no, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. If you, if we take a two thousand thirty uh, guaranteed bond and a two thousand thirty non guaranteed bond, what's the difference in the interest rates? Can you go back to those pages just uh, on sure. the refunding, for example? Sure. Not exactly, just approximately. Yeah. Well, I'm and I, you, you can pick any year you well, want. I just pick the longest one. It, in the short end, it's not as great. It's by three or four basis points. But when you get out about 10, 15 years, you're looking probably about 20 basis points, which is significant on, on a large piece of bonds. Mm -hmm. So I say 20 so, basis points is 0.20%. So while I like the you know the, the 2.2 million dollar savings right. from 22 million and and the and the 7 million on the 98, um, those yeah. are great numbers. If you're refunding these bonds, could you not just take that? How many millions of dollars of bonds that do not have the guarantee do we have out? If Besides I remember, this 22. I think this is. I think this is only other uh, bond you have outstanding that's non PSF. And since we can't replace those with PSF PSF bonds, can we take those bonds off the table? Can we instead of refunding them? Can we prepay? Them? Oh sure. Yes, sir. Okay. And even if we reissued them in the, some future bond time, right. okay, would that not, uh, what would this, what would that savings versus the two million? I mean, we're replacing them with a, well, it, a non PS interest rate. Is it significant? Well, I mean, right, you're talking about if you took cash, you had 20, well, in this case, 22.5 million for the cash, 22. and you paid the cash, then they'd be gone. But let's just say you had to, at some point, you had to replace the 22 with bonds that are PSA. I mean, you know, in, in a different bond issue, not replace. That would be the wrong yeah. word. You can't issue, replace. Issue without Re -issue PSF. Reissue that 22 million sometimes. Gosh, it would depend on what the rates are at the time we had to issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, 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 uh, I, I wish I knew, I wouldn't be right here if I knew the, the interest you could do. But in the future, I mean, PSF is the 
best selling rights you can get. If you have PSF, uh, uh, it's a gold standard. And the, the AAA rating, they're, they're not, there's not another bond issuer out there. The government's not even rate AAA anymore. But you also have to have a reason to issue new bonds. True. And it can't be just to, to put cash in the bank. Right. Mm. So that, that's. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be the first time though we found twenty two million dollars that, that we could use. What? Wouldn't be the first time we found twenty two million dollars. No, I'm just use. saying, you know, to Which, sell new bonds in the future you have to have a reason to so. And I will point this out too, on these on these non PSF bonds that we're talking about, they're currently callable. Okay. So we're we're gonna issue them and close in November, so it'll be ninety days from the call date. So the current they're not gonna get better than what they are savings wise now. So. That, that answers but still, you're saying there's only about a 20 basis point difference. There is in the 15 years. In about 15 years out, but again, every every year it's, it I understand. gradually gets yeah. yep. yes, sir. Thank you for that explanation. And then on page five, we talk about the new money. You all have 40 million dollars left from your 2008 bond election. This will finish up that authorization. Um, we we have the debt service, how we see it. Uh, shaping out to be in the far left, you have the current debt service requirements, which includes the results of those refundings we just talked about, plus the principal, principal and interest. Uh, again, at, at current markets, in our estimate for the far right, the total debt service excuse me, de total debt service requirements after the issuance of the two refunding series and the new money piece. And then the, in the last page, this is the schedule of events. This is how we see shaping up. You all decide to approve this tonight. We've actually already started on a draft preliminary official statement to, to give to investors. Uh, we will continue working on that. Uh, we look to sell the week of October 6th um, and then close uh, the week of November 17th. We're actually probably looking to close by November 20th. With that, I'll be happy to answer questions. I also want to introduce uh, Tom Sage and Clay Holland with Anders Kurther here. They're your bond counsel. Uh, what you're approving tonight, they actually drafted the, the parameter order. And if you have any questions about them, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer that. I'm sure this is calculated in there, but this, this, the savings, it includes transaction costs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's, it's pure net savings. This is net savings, yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Good deal. All right. Is there a motion to approve so the order? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it, it, Mr. Roebuck. Thank you. Thanks for coming. All right. Item 6B, authorization for payment of bills and investment activity. Dr. Doctor. I'm going to Darren Rice to come present that item, please. <clears throat> Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, tonight we're recommending that the board of trustees give authorization to the superintendent or his designee for the payment of bills and related investment activity occurring from September 17, 2014 through September 15, 2015. Uh, authorization is needed uh, for payment of bills in accordance with our amended budget and also the related investment activity in compliance with our investment policies uh, for transactions occurring between those dates. I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or questions? All right. If not, all those in favor? And all those opposed? All right. Motion carries. And item C, resolutions approving investment policy and strategies, sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities, <clears throat> excuse me, and a list of qualified investment brokers. Mr. Rice, please. Yes, tonight we're recommending that the Board of Trustees adopt the resolutions approving investment policies and strategies, sources of instruction relating to investment responsibilities, and the list of uh, qualified investment brokers. Uh, we, we're not requesting any changes except to the list of brokers. Uh, we, we would like to add one broker, Stern to D, uh, to our list of qualified brokers. Uh, we have met with the investment committee, and they have uh, reviewed these and approved them, and we're recommending your approval of these. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? If not, all those in favor and all those opposed. All right. And now item D, financial reports. That's right, sir. <laughs> If you'll walk over here. Put your tennis head. shoes on tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's my honor tonight to present the financial statements for the month of August. Please note that this is our fiscal year end. So these statements, once we go through the full audit 
and any adjustment entries will be made. So there, there might be some slight changes in these uh, statements. Uh, this report will include the general fund, debt service, job nutrition, and self-funded. And the first statement we're going to look at this evening is our balance sheet. And it's going to show the assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. We always like to look at our cash and investments, make sure that uh, that we're invested and, and, and diversified in our investments. So there that is. Uh, property tax collections. Uh, we always like to see where we are up to the 100%. Uh, we have just finished our, our year-end calculations on our property taxes, and we actually did exceed 100% this year, 100.3%. So good collection rate. I was trying to figure it out, but that was because of fees and all the other good stuff we catch up with, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> the next statement we'll look at is our income statement. It shows our revenues, expenditures, and fund balances. And if we look at our expenditures uh, for the year, as you can see in the general fund, the majority of our expenditures are in the instructional area. And you can see the other funds where their expenses occur. Uh, general fund balance, we worked hard to give you a pretty good estimate where we think we'll be uh, even after the audit. Uh, we're estimating an increase in our fund balance about $3 million, uh, so a solid increase there. Uh, debt service fund, this uh, Projection hadn't changed much. We're showing a decrease of about $5 million in the fund balance there. Child nutrition, a projected decrease of about $1.1 million. We were showing $1.5 million earlier, but some of the equipment that we purchased this summer didn't come in, so we don't have that expense, about $400,000 worth of the equipment that hadn't arrived yet. Uh, Self-funded insurance. Coming into the summer, we were really feeling good. We were hoping we would have a good summer, uh, but as you know, that's our large claim months. Uh, unfortunately, uh, July and August hit us pretty hard. Um, so for the year, we had total revenues of $32.9 million. We had expenses of $34.3 million. So revenues under expenditures of about $1.9 million. So, so uh, a hit in the fund there. Uh, participation at our, at our wellness centers. 1.3. I'm sorry, 1.3. 1.4, actually. Yeah. Uh, participation at our, at our Conroe ISD Wellness Centers for the year, we had 6,916 uh, participants. At Oak Ridge, we had 5,764, and at Conroe, 1,152 participants, averaging 576 per month at the centers. Our $109 million bond transition plan, uh, as of August, uh, we have currently expended and encumbered $57.2 million. Our estimate to complete these projects is $48.4 million, leaving us with a projected forecast uh, of this plan of $105.6 million, leaving us with contingency of about $3.4 million. Our investments for the month. At the end of July, we had $229 million invested. At the end of August, roughly $200 million invested. The WAM pools in Capital One, our overnight accounts one day, uh, the WAM of our U.S. Treasury notes includes, uh, we also have some agencies and CDs out there, 673 days. So the overall WAM of our portfolio at the end of the year was 95 days. The yield of maturity of our portfolio at that time was 0.2263%. And our benchmark, the 90-day T-bill, was 0.025. All right. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Rice. We appreciate your presentation. All right, I do not believe we have any, any executive session items tonight, so we'll move on to item 9, legal, except for review, TASB local policy update 100, Dr. Stock. Mrs. Gladys. As you know, you all got to much beloved yellow uh, vantage points document that explains to you all the policy recommendations contained in local update 100, but I'll highlight a few of them for you. Um, they have been distributed to staff and we're reviewing those right now and changes are being recommended and I sent some of those to you but I anticipate that we'll be making more changes. Um, specifically, I want to note for you like CW is our facility naming policy. We made one small change to that but I think it's important and significant. We changed the word schools to facilities to be sure that everyone knew that the board names not just schools, they name facilities as well. That issue had come up. Um, DCB and DCE are two of our employment policies and they relate to the types of contracts that will be issued based on the positions people hold. And generally, term contracts or contracts that are issued under Chapter 21 are issued to folks that hold SBEC certifications. Um, we do have a lot of employees 
like myself who don't have that, I have an SBEC certification, but I don't use it in my job, and so I would not be entitled to a Chapter 21, and so we're kind of cleaning up practices in the past with those two policies, and you'll see some changes we made there. Um, in FDA, that's the interdistrict transfer policy, the Commissioner of Education ruled that districts can't revoke interdistrict transfers, that's someone who doesn't reside in the district but attends district schools during the school year for misbehavior or some other reason. Once it's been granted, the transfer lasts the entire year, and so we've modified the policy um, accordingly. And the final one I'd point out to you is our advertising and fundraising policy, GKB. It's just kind of been reorganized, it's more clear, and it added some language that um, put people on notice that just because we accept advertising doesn't necessarily mean we endorse a particular product or service or a vendor, um, and that we do not accept political advertising in any of our venues. So those are the changes that we're working on, and we'll bring them back to you in October for adoption. Thank you, Mrs. Glass. All right, I have no other items. I just have kind of a, since we're on legal, just a quick, kind of more of an acknowledgement uh, that I guess um, I just want to say, because I, I believe I speak on behalf of the entire board, that anytime a citizen raises an issue about our children's safety, is something we take very seriously. And so even though there's not any discussion about it, we'll take that up at the appropriate time. I just didn't, since there was a concern brought about kid safety with buses, that we would, we would address that appropriately. But I did not want the meeting to go without at least some acknowledgement that that is top priority for the board. For Absolutely. The board. And we'll follow up, and, up administratively. We always want our kids safe. Absolutely. All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you. Motion.